Hi, welcome back to Strategic Planet. Today I want to continue with my overview of Gephi, but looking specifically at the appearance of your graph, focusing on the top left-hand corner, which is the work element that um, has been given the title appearance, and the tool tips or tools that you will find at the bottom of the graph workspace, although I will cover a few uh, elements on the left-hand side of the graph work workspace. I will also uh, touch a little bit on the on the layout, but essentially what I'm going to do is talk about uh, the, the main appearance, how you uh, put labels on, change the colors, um, uh, etc. Now, essentially what we're going to do is um, prepare the graph and it builds on the work or the video that um, I did previously, which you can find in the playlist before this particular one, uh, that um, uh, you've uploaded your data uh, and you will go from a graph that looks like this to this. So back to the original graph, here we go. Um, to put the, uh, the, the graph into context, I just want to show you the data that I've used. Essentially, it's made up data, which is uh, relatively simple. I've got uh, 12 nodes, which I've labeled as one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, et cetera, right till the end. Now you will have uh, some form of unique alphanumeric code or even just alpha or just numeric as uh, just alpha as I've got here that identifies the item. So th these are the codes or the nodes which uh, are embedded within the graph, which we're going to look at today. And what I've also done is included a reference, uh, and this is a segment. So when you uh, do your um, analysis, if you can include as much data as you can from the nodes, then you will have a much richer source of information to play with. So this reference will be uh, some form of segment associated with the particular node. So it could be gender, male or female, it could be nationality, it could be type of business, so wh whatever you want. And you don't have to restrict it to one uh, segment. You could have a variety. Uh, and as we'll see when we go through the graph, uh, it uh, makes the visualization of the social network analysis uh, that much richer. So we have um, the, the nodes and uh, they are uh, linked together with edges uh, and I've got a number of edges here. They're all directed. I've just kept it simple and kept them all directed. Um, so the source and the target. Uh, and I've also included labels for the edges. So in this instance, I've um, uh, targeted the label as either urgent, information or request. So throughout the, um, uh, the, the link, I've got um, the, the label edge uh, named uh, uh, as such. Now, I've included another segment, so I've called this one ref1 uh, and ref2, ref which is the identical name used on the label. And the reason for that you'll see later on is that um, we can then color the edge uh, in relation to the, uh, the, the the label name, which makes life a little bit easier. And then um, just to illustrate the purpose, I've put another segment or another category that um, can be attributed to this particular uh, type of engagement. So um, uh, as we see later on, it'll give us a, an idea of how uh, various networks within networks could appear. Now, just as an overview, uh, you can see here how the um, uh, the nodes uh, have interacted together, uh, and uh, I've added up the the sum here and the sum at the bottom, the um, uh, the degrees. So essentially. Uh, I've sorted it. And number seven, node seven, has the highest degree of interaction, either in or out. Now, you'll also notice that the green here, that's in and out. So because they are directed, uh, essentially what it means is that um, three has sent a message to six and then six has replied. So it's not, not quite the same as uh, something like a Facebook where it is an undirected uh, link where, you know, there, there's no... Um, 
a weight given to the the which node has sent it out or you you are friends of for them so it, it is uh, undirected but in this case i'm just focusing on directed in and out um, uh, but the this example here six to three is a conversation that's take place same again with uh, six to ten so that's the um, the, the information you uh, end up with a graph that looks like this uh, now, uh, there, there are 12 nodes, not a lot of interaction going on here. So it's fairly simple to uh, get an idea of what the, um, the area looks like. The first thing you've got to do really is um, try and expand it out. And what you see here is that uh, it's thrown out the proportions for the, uh, the graph, but it's, it's meant that my nodes, which aren't um, connected, are quite a way away, uh, but I want them to, to be together. I will be going through this element in more detail uh, in, a, in another video, uh, but I'm just gonna touch on some of the aspects within it. So. That's what's happened when I've run the, um, the the first layout process and it's thrown the nodes away. I want to bring in these two closer together. So how do I do that? I, I need to click on the, um, the the grab icon or the drag as they call it. Uh, then I can go to that particular node and, and uh, bring it closer in and I'll do the same for this one here. So I've got my uh, nodes uh, closer. That's just an example, which I wanted to illustrate uh, one of the tools up here, how you can drag items um, on the, uh, uh, the network away. So I could actually drag that one further as well, away as well. I could drag this one further away uh, as well. Now, if uh, let's say um, I chose the select item here, then all it does is highlight the node and its immediate neighbors. So I, I've got that, and uh, when you look at the, um, the, 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 the screen, there's quite a lot of uh, empty space around it. So what um, uh, should you be doing? Well, you need to zoom in. So the easiest way to zoom is to use your scroll button to uh, zoom in. But what you'll, you'll notice is it doesn't do it centrally. It sort of like pushes it um, to the side. Now, there is the option of clicking on this one, center on graph, but it tends to put it back has the same size so I'm doing the scroll again I'm not really getting what I want so what um, I uh, advocate doing is uh, going back to the grab but as we saw previously when I click on that there how do I grab the whole network what you can do is uh, click on configure and you can change the diameter of the grab so that it covers the item. So now I can move the uh, item across the screen wherever I want, or the, the network rather, I should say, across the, the screen to w whatever location I want. Um, I'm going to now use my scroll um, button on the mouse to in increase the, the size. And I, because the, uh, the grab circle is only in that area then I'm only getting that um, section move I can move this one a little bit closer I can move that one a little bit closer actually I'm going to move those bits uh, out a bit uh, I'm just going to increase the size then I'm thinking now actually I'm happy with that what I what I do is go back uh, and reduce the diameter so I don't get this great big shadow over the, the, the screen. So there we see uh, I have um, my network on the workspace, which is um, more visible and easier to manipulate or play with.